Hello friends, today we are going to take one of the important topics in human endocrinology that's the pancreas, the insulin, the glucagon and the related diseases of which most important is the diabetes. So let us take the important endocrine gland, in fact that's a heterocrine or bexocrine gland that's pancreas. So let me go with that. This is today's topic. We have pancreas. Fine. Now let us discuss first what this pancreas is exactly and where it is located. So basically if you see the digestive system wherein we have this esophagus, then we have stomach, then there's the first part of intestine that is duodenum. Close to the duodenum, the leaf-like structure is a gland. This gland is called pancreas. So this is stomach. This is called the first part of small intestine that is duodenum and this is pancreas. This is pancreas. So this is the location of this gland. Now let us discuss it is what are its important features. So pancreas is basically a heterocrine gland. This is pancreas. This is a heterocrine gland. Now, because what, what is heterocrine gland is that this is example of such a gland which is both endocrine and exocrine. Exocrine glands are those which have duct, that means ducted glands, which are they take part in different uh, systems, for example, in digestive system, in other systems also. While as those glands which are ductless glands which pour their secretions directly into the blood, those are called endocrine glands. So this particular organ, particular gland, pancreas, is a heterocrine gland or a mixocrine having both exocrine part and endocrine part. So this is having a duct. This has two parts. Suppose this is exocrine part this is exocrine part and this is endocrine part now this is having a duct which connects this pancreas with duodenum small intestine when it pours its secretions for digestion but we are not taking that part presently we are dealing with this endocrine part so in fact if we see the exocrine part because it is a heterocrine gland so it is a heterocrine gland it is a heterocrine gland now important is that the exocrine part uh, let us let us first discuss the, the weight the length the length of this pancreas is from this to this if we, if we consider this part from end to end from end to end, this is having length of 15 centimeters. So this is 15 centimeters. This has width of 2.5 cm and weight is 85 gram. So this is a weight, this has got the weight of 85 grams. It has both exocrine and endocrine part. The exocrine part is in the form of acne it is in the form of acne where there are different acnes like this the exocrine part is having acnes there are about they, they secrete about uh, 500 to 1000 ml of pancreatic juice pancreatic juice used for digestion they secrete 500 to 100 
थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड टू थाउजेंड एम एल ऑफ जिस जूस पर डे सो दिस इज अथ हाउ एग्जैक्टली इज पोरिंग इज सिक्रिशन इन ड्यूरियम ना सिंस वी आर डीलिंग विद एंडोग्राइन पार्ट दैट इज डिस्कस ओनली दैट द एंडोक्राइन पोर्शन ऑफ दिस पेनक्रियाज वेर इज लोकेटेड इट्स नॉट टू मच इट्स अ वेरी स्मॉल द एंडोक्राइन पोर्शन ऑफ पेनक्रियाज इज वेरी स्मॉल दैट इज अबाउट वन पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट ओनली वन पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट ऑफ दिस पेनक्रियाज इज यूज इन एंडोक्राइन फंक्शन सो देर आर वन मिलियन आईलेट्स वन मिलियन आईलेट्स these are called pancreatic islets are better known as islets of langer hans islets of langer hans basically were discovered by this particular scientist in year 1869 so it was langer hans langer hans so these are called pancreatic islets or islets of langer hans each islet the each pancreatic islet is having 3000 cells each islet so suppose these are pancreatic islets these are islets of langer hans or pancreatic islets these are pancreatic islets each islet is having 3000 3000 in number 3000 cells So in 1.5 percent of this endocrine part of pancreas, we are having one million islets of Langer hens, and each Langer hen is having 3,000 cells. These 3,000 cells are basically of five types. So only for all the cells, 3,000 cells in each Langer hen, they are of five types. So there are five types of cells. So let's discuss those. we have beta cells beta cells we have alpha cells these are alpha cells we have delta cells alpha beta delta and we have two more cells those are gamma cells and f cells so these are five types of cells these beta cells secrete insulin these alpha cells secrete glucagon okay so in basically two important hormones are secreted by beta cells and alpha cells then there is a these 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 delta cells they secrete somatostatin they secrete somato cetatin one of the important hormone now these gamma cells they secrete gastrin so they secrete gastrin finally we have polypeptide secreting cells those are f cells they secrete pancreatic polypeptide so they secrete pancreatic pancreatic polypeptide fine now if we discuss each and every cell one by one then let us complete these small cells first the gamma cells which secrete this gastrin this this gastrin is like gastrin secreted by pylorus pyloric end of stomach so these this gastrin is a same as gastrin secreted by this stomach having different functions for re regulating different uh, uh i mean to say that the gastric uh, juice the the it is it's like it's like stomach gastrin the function of gastrin is is like that now we have one more cell that is somatostatin it looks like local paracrine hormone so this is a local 
paracrine hormone what it does is that it also controls the digestive tract what it does is that it checks the secretion of the somatostatin checks the secretion of alpha cells and beta cells for secreting insulin and glucagon that means it checks it controls it in fact regulates it reduces their secretion likewise it also checks digestive tract so in digestive tract when it also checks uh, digestive tract it checks secretion of digestive tract so it does some functions like the mortality mortality of uh, alimentary canal then the absorption of alimentary canal absorption of food mortality and different activities of alimentary canal which is regulated by the digestive tract and in fact reduces those three functions the somatostatin that means it reduces it keeps us check it reduces secretion mortality and absorption of digestive uh, glands in digestive tract and that's why it is important then we have f cells they secret polypeptide these also regulate the secreting secreting activity of digestive glands so it it also regulates checks the digestive glands in elementary canal now we have two important cells let us discuss those in detail so these were some important functions of these three types of cells now let us discuss these two cells let us first take the insulin insulin is secreted by b cells it is a it is a proteinaceous hormone it's a protein based hormone the nature is protein so it is a protein naceous hormone it is a protein naceous hormone it is secreted as pro insulin pro it is secreted as pro insulin then it gets activated when it is going to act having its own action it gets activated to active form that is insulin in all to so this is the way how hormone action is regulated this is one of the important perfect example how hormones are regulated the function the the activity of hormones regulated so it's a pro insulin it's in active form it gets converted into insulin the active form so it's a proteinaceous hormone it is secreted when blood glucose increases when glucose and amino acids amino acids in blood when they increase in blood when these two increase in blood it gets secreted it gets activated it is go it goes on to play its own function and that's important it checks it reduces that uh, blood glucose by different ways the target cells on which this hormone acts is this liver this liver cell is a target cell the muscle cell is a target cell and then adipose tissue adipose tissue these are some important target and in fact main target organs of insulin how this the blood glucose when it increases the amino acids are increased in plasma in blood is goes on to do different actions so how it regulates the glucose glucose level it lowers glucose of a blood by uh, by absorption by absorption so there are different methods so the glucose is absorbed by cells glucose absorption it increases glucose absorption by cells so it acts on cells which go and absorb glucose for respiration so it is important for 
aspiration that means it increases the the energy production here so glucose absorption by cells for respiration it also acts on liver and muscle cells as already said for glycogenesis so the muscle and, and liver cells absorb this glucose for glycogenesis that means synthesis of glycogen from glucose so it goes on to form a glycogen from glucose that's an example perfect example of anabolism that's the building of structures so by by formation of glycogen that glucose level in blood decreases that's one another way it also converts glucose to fatty acids it converts glucose to fatty acids and finally big fats are formed so fats are formed in and they, they they go on to get synthesized from fatty acids first it converts glucose into fatty acids and this is one of the important way through which it reduces plasma glucose it also increases uh, ammonia acid absorption it increases ammonia acid absorption by cells so thereby increasing protein synthesis protein synthesis so cells go on to absorb amino acids from glucose from blood and they take the amino acids taken by the cells is used for protein synthesis and this is the way how glucose or amino acids are controlled so as i said that this gets activated because of high amino acids in blood that means it absorbs amino acid it regulates it increases absorption of amino acids by these uh, cells in order to promote protein synthesis it also promotes fat synthesis so as already said fat synthesis is increased it reduces oxidation of fatty acids so fatty acids do not go on to get oxidized because of oxidation fatty acids may be released and they may be converted to glucose that it inhibits the oxidation of fatty acids so that's fat gets stored it gets remained as such as it is so that no fat comes in blood or no amino acid or glucose comes in blood so this is one of the important thing it also it decreases protein breakdown so protein break breakdown is decreases decreased protein breakdown it decreases protein breakdown that means the protein is used for construction of different things that means amino acids are not released from protein if it is deficient if it is not present if the insulin is deficient then of course everything gets reversed and high glucose occurs in blood in urea then finally the disease comes in that's called diabetes so the disease is diabetes we will be discussing this diabetes in detail first let us take another cell type another hormone that is alpha cells now this is important one more cell type that is alpha cell so we have alpha cells these cells go on to secrete another hormone that is glucagon that is glucagon this is again a proteinaceous hormone so it's a protein based hormone proteinaceous hormone so this is proteinaceous hormone again like insulin the important uh, the importance of this hormone is will be discussed it is uh, secreted by alpha cells it is secreted in reaction to hypoglycemia hypoglycemia that is low blood glucose low blood glucose hypo means low gly glyce means glucose emia means blood so low 
blood glucose to this uh, action the reaction is that glycogen gets secreted by alpha cell of the pancreas then it controls it controls it makes blood glucose to come in blood to again come in the blood so this hypo secretion of the glucose is reduced the glucose becomes normal how does it do its function is that it what it does it makes things opposite to that of insulin it increases glycogenolysis that means glycogen is broken down glycogenolysis that is glycogen is broken to glucose so it's a reverse of glycogenesis the glycogenolysis lysis means breakdown as already said we have said glycogenesis genesis in synthesis glycogenolysis means breakdown of the glycogen gets broken down to form a glucose which comes in blood and it is completely taken from cells from muscles from tissue from liver to blood so that the glucose level in blood gets normal it also takes part it makes deamination so the process of deamination that means the amino acids are not formed they get deaminated or some important molecules get deaminated they form glucose finally it also controls metabolism of lactic acid metabolism of lactic acid and other fatty acids that's also controlled by this hormone in order to increase the glucose in blood uh, so the lactic acid and fatty acids they go on to form glucose that glucose which gets newly formed from amino acids are from from this fatty acids that is called a glyco neogenesis so this is a this is called glyco neogenesis the glyco neogenesis so this is the these fatty acids get converted into glucose and this is the thing which is called the gluconeogenesis i have used many terms please remember those now if it gets excess if it is it is excess glycogen 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 is excess in production then if it is excess it creates glyco glucose urea that means high urine high glucose in urine gly that's glycosuria that's actually glycosuria Gly glycose means glucose urea means in urine now let us uh, have to let us discuss two important terms little bit what is hyper and hypoglycemia so we have two terms one is hyper and is another is hypo glycemia this is also glycemia emia means blood glyco means glucose hyper means high low so high blood glucose low blood glucose we can also write is glycosemia can be written as c e a m e a semia so hyper and hypo now these are important terms time time is asked in exam hyper glycemia means high blood glucose so blood gets increased in this case blood gets decreased now when there is a hyperglycemia more blood oxygen in this uh, blood in blood more glucose is there in blood we feel tired the man feels tired so uh, he is not able to work properly and uh, there is a kind of weight loss so weight loss is there when there is weight loss because because glucose is taken away from cells 
no anabolism occurs most of the catabolism gets for gets uh, into action and that's why the weight gets lost from body because the person feels that everything which is built is again destroyed again degraded again catabolized that's why its weight loss is there and there is break breaking of muscle tissues muscle tissues get broken down so cramps type of uh, feeling occurs so muscle breakdown now in case of hypoglycemia when there is more low blood low blood glucose there are also some problems like uh, hunger is there sweating is there so he feels hunger he feels sweating when there is low blood glucose because glu blood glucose is used for different functions when it is low in blood sweating occurs irritability occurs and double vision may also occur double vision irritability so we can write irritability double vision this is these are the important symptoms of this hypoglycemia now let us discuss the important disease with related to pancreas that is diabetes what is diabetes so let us discuss diabetes so this is diabetes now diabetes is more important these days because as we see in day to day life in every country of the world the percentage of diabetics increase and the way it occurs in different age groups from children to older ones in every sex female male and the seborrheic or it's a type of you know it 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 goes on to get dis dispersed in, ter in terms of it occur occurs almost through 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 the whole geography of a nation that means no population or community or any kind of pocket of country is left behind by this disease so it's very important to discuss diabetes so what diabetes is we can simply say diabetes or it's called diabetes mellitus so this is called actually diabetes mellitus so diabetes mellitus now diabetes mellitus or diabetes is actually high blood glucose that means glucose is high in blood hyperglycemic condition occurs the blood is not taken by cells or it's not controlled or it is not taken away by hormone on base of that it has two types either insulin is not there which may take this uh, glucose away or insulin is there but cells did not recognize this glucose or they not recognize the insulin or insulin receptors get deactivated that means the disease has two it has got two types one is insulin dependent another is insulin independent or we can say non insulin dependent diabetes in case of non insulin diabetic disease it's autosomal recessive disease it is recessive it's, it does not gets prominent it did, God does not gets notified uh, because of that it move, goes on to increase its predominance in every section of the society the autosomal recessive disease which is insulin independent or non insulin dependent diabetes because more dangerous because even if you administer any insulin we cannot do anything because cells have to the receptor in the cells that is the target that is the important point where we have to do something some modifications have to be done and that's very difficult to recognize that 
Now things have changed from the past. So let us discuss first this diabetes mellitus. Diabetes mellitus is insulin, as we said, insulin dependent. So it is insulin dependent. And that is non insulin dependent. Diabetes mellitus. So IDDM and IDDM, that is insulin dependent diabetes mellitus, non insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. These are two types. Now, think is that what happens when either insulin is absent or receptors do not recognize everything? The two diabetes, what is there? How high blood? What it makes? What are the important problems caused by this? We can discuss those one by one. Basically, diabetes is characterized by different other problems, related problems. So we have some characters of diabetes and those characters are important to know. First is hyperglycemia. So first is hyperglycemia. Hyperglycemia. That is high blood glucose the blood glucose gets increased for example it's actually if we see the important content of this the normal is 90 milligram per 100 that is 90 milligram per 100 ml SI units are same that is milli and milli milligram and milliliter so 90 milligram per 100 milliliter is normal in blood it gets increased to 300 1200 300 to 1200 milligrams per 100 ml so this is the amount when it crosses 300 it goes up to 1200 this is the concentration of glucose in blood that's hyperglycemia and there are many problems related with hyper glycemia as earlier said some of those now it also goes on to increase in urine so it is glycosuria so second is glycosuria that means high urine glucose high the, the urine is having high glucose the Concentration gets crossed to a renal threshold which is 150 to 1, there is 150 to 180 milligrams per 100 ml of urine. So this is blood, this is urine, this is renal threshold, this excretion of through through renal through kidneys is 150 to 180 when it crosses it when it crosses the renal threshold we can see high glucose in urine that is glycosuria we have polyuria also polyuria that means excessive urine because of increased glucose in urea we take more of water or more of water gets into urine in order to make dilute this kind of glucose the water content in urine increases that's why it's excessive urine that is excessive urine high water content in urine we have polydipsia also another character is polydipsia when urine gets excessive amount of water it gets out of this uh, body we feel more thirsty so excessive thirst excessive thirst is there we feel also polyphagia polyphagia that is excessive hunger because whatever we glucose we take that gets outside urine the outside body or that gets released lost 
that is why we feel high hunger polyphagia we fear dehydration De dehydration because you de if the water gets outside the body we feel dehydration sixth is this dehydration now one more the fat and protein storage gets decreased fats get as a decreased storage protein synthesis gets decreased the proteins do not go on to form because of uh, lack of insulin fatty acids do not get stored fat oxidation of fatty acids do occur oxidation of fatty acids and amino acids occur because of this oxidation of fatty acids occur and other more and more glucose comes in blood the disease gets more uh, dangerous day by day if not controlled now we have acidosis the blood ph increases suppose the normal is 7.4 7.4 this 7.4 gets to 6.8 that is it is reduced ph is reduced the body the blood becomes acidic the acidic medium acidosis this is called acidosis another is ketone bodies are formed ketone bodies are formed ketone bodies get formed so this is called ketone body formation they get in blood that is ketone amia or urea ketone urea that is ketone amia in blood or ketone urea ketone bodies in urine the ketone ketone bodies are dangerous in high concentration then what we get is that growth hormone gets ineffective growth hormone gets ineffective the growth the function of growth hormone is not maintained properly tissue wasting and healing decreases tissue wasting and also healing decreases tissue wasting increases healing decreases injuries do not get uh, healed and then we find feel gangrene is gangrene is because once some body part gets injured it does not get healed we feel gangrene is now important one is blurred vision is there there is 13th type blurred vision blurred vision as we see in hypoglycemia we have seen double vision this is hyperglycemic this is blurred vision is there some persons may get they get go into coma or unconsciousness this is the dangerous situation when it occurs and this is the important these are important characters now how to control this diabetes mellitus the important thing is how to control it because control is more important prevention is better also now we have two important things first is insulin dependent diabetes that is insulin dependent diabetes mellitus what would we administer insulin we administer insulin not through not orally because it is a proteinaceous hormone it gets us broken down in digestive tract it is given uh, through through uh, it is going into directly into the blood but not uh, taken orally and uh, this is the insulin is administered directly now uh, sometimes in case of non insulin dependent diabetes mellitus what we do is that we uh, give some important hypoglycemics we give some hypo glycemic substances or drugs this controls the second type of diabetes that is non insulin dependent the important hypoglycemics are tolbutamide tol butamide this is important hypoglycemic tolbutamide one more important is orinase one is urinase urinase this is another important one and one more that is sulfonyl 
یوریز سالفو نایل سالفو نایل یوریز دیز آر امپارٹنٹ ہائپو گلیسمکس کیون ٹو نان انسولین ڈیپینڈنٹ ڈائبیٹیز میلیٹس دیٹ از ہیئر انسولین از پریزنٹ بٹ اٹ از ناٹ ٹیکن بائی سیلز ریسیپٹرس آر ہیو پرابلم دیز گو آن ٹو گیٹ فائن ٹو ریسیپٹرس ریسیپٹرس دین ریکاگنائز دا انسولین دے ریکاگنائز دا گلیکوز دے ٹیک اٹ ان سائڈ دیم اینڈ کنٹرول دی گلیکوز سو دس از امپارٹنٹ ان بوتھ کیسز ان بوتھ کیسز آف انسولین ڈیپینڈنٹ اینڈ نان انسولین ڈیپینڈنٹ اٹ از ریکمینڈڈ دیٹ شوگر فری ڈائٹ از گیون شوگر فری ڈائٹ از پرافرڈ ان بوتھ کیسز ناؤ انسولین وین اٹ از انجیکٹ اٹ از ناٹ گیون اورلی وی کین ہیو سم امپارٹنٹ انسولین that is substitutes one is fungal substitute one fungal substitute is dimeth so this is we have taken for fungus this this is dimethyl estericoinone b1 dimethyl estericoinone esteri کوئنون ڈائی میتھائل ایسٹری کوئنون بی ون دس از فنگل سبا سیچوٹ اٹ از ٹیکن فرام فنگی سیڈومون دس فنگی از سیڈومیسائریا دا فنگس از سیڈومیسائریا سیڈومیسائریا فنگس گیوز از سم فنگل انیسیچوٹ ڈائی میتھائل ایسٹری کوئنون بی ون دس از دا انیسیچوٹ دس از substitute for insulin so this also goes on to secrete insulin this chemical can bind to and activate insulin receptors resulting in utilization of blood glucose so this is the important chemical this is given in uh, even in second type then we have one more that is implantation of immobilized that is implantation of immobilized beta cells beta cells as you know they secrete insulin beta cells can be cultured they can be immobilized immobilized and they then they can be implanted here you know that immobilization is one of the important technology recent technology advanced technology the beta cells get cultured they get immobilized in a covering and then they get implanted in body they secrete insulin as like one of the yeast yeast is used in braving industry to secrete zymes so we have in in braving industry the yeast is immobilized then it continuously secretes zymes likewise we can use beta cells immobilize them and implant them in body they can continuously secrete insulin and this is important technology very important technology that is implantation of immobilized b cells these cells go on to continuously form new insulin and you know uh, these cells do not get rejected from body because of their covering the covering is it is made in such a way that it gets accepted by body the covering gets accepted by body it is it is not rejected by immune system that's why it is implanted and the immobilization technology very important technology we may discuss this in some in, in short video anywhere this immobilization technology how things enzymes and uh, proteins hormones or some other chemicals can be immobilized and implanted in body so this is the basic of immobilization technology so this was all about insulin and this pancreas hope you uh, understand all these things now i hope we will make in meet in next day video with another important to topic for a neat biology till then goodbye thank you